The video tutorial that we have here is going to address installing a MIDI device called SynthFont um, that you can use along with Notation Musician and Notation Composer. You can use SynthFont to load various sound fonts that you can find around the internet and we actually have um, um, a number of resources for finding um, MIDI or uh, synth sound fonts around the internet. Um, if you go to our main website uh, www.notation.com and look under support uh, I mean not support community we have resources for musicians okay on this page you can scroll down you have various topics and you will find under audio topics sound font resources and here we have an entire page that will tell you uh, what sound fonts are and some information um, about them. Uh, we have some different questions that you might ask if you're looking into them. Um, you can also find some resources for free sound fonts and there are a lot of good ones out there. It's kind of like MIDI files. Um, we have some people who are just dedicated to putting out some good things and sharing them which is great for the rest of us. So you'll find some free sound fonts. Um, sometimes you can find an, an entire general MIDI collection which makes life quite easy. Um, if you're looking for a special instrument you can also find those. Um, so this is a great way to get into some much better sounds than what you would find um, or what you have with the GS wavetable. Okay, the GS wavetable will get you going but if you, if you really want to um, look into getting some some very good sounds then I'd strongly suggest uh, that you know sound fonts is a good way to go and synth font is a good engine to use to get you started okay so we've got this information here um, and now what I'm going to show you is the synth font itself okay to find that program and it's um, uh, created and developed by Kenneth Runt his, uh, his website is www.synthfont.com and um, it is free it will give you a nag screen but you know he puts in a lot of work so it'd be really good to donate he's not charging a whole lot for it so if you try it and you like it go ahead and give the man some money <laughs> it takes a uh, takes time and effort to develop these programs okay so he's got a, a few different ones. If you have a VST host of any type, you can get the VST synth font, which is very handy. Um, I use that myself. But what we're going to look at specifically today is just synth font, the main program, because you can use that along with the MIDI cables that we showed you how to install in a separate tutorial video. And you can connect them and then have some great sounds using Notation Musician and Notation Composer. Okay, so we go to the SynthFont main website, go to the downloads, and get the full installation package. Okay, so it'll add, you know, I'm using Firefox. Um, what you want to do is to save the file and put that somewhere where you know where it is. Okay, so we've downloaded the file. We we're going to double click it here. You might see this come up. Probably will. Um, yes, we're going to run it. You may or may not see this. If you do, then you can go ahead and set it. Um, just accept the agreement. Go to next. If, um, I have a 64 bit machine, which is why you see the x86. You may not see this on your installation. Um, and you can choose your options and then you could launch synth font okay right after your setup so I'm gonna X this out so that it's out of the way we're gonna go ahead and finish this and here you will see the main um, main screen when you open it up now I'm going to scoot this over a little bit and I apologize for it acting weird. I'm over at the corner of my um, 
my display here, my monitor. <laughs> but what I need you to see, okay, is there's this very cool little button here. Okay, now when you first install SynthFont, you will need to have a, you'll probably want to have a general MIDI um, sound font available. Um, and again, on the resource page that I showed you for um, for our our fonts and stuff, um, there are a number of different places you can get them. Um, and I would, you know, there are a lot of good ones. After you get those, and you've got synth font set up, and it. When you first install it, it will walk you through some setup stuff. Okay. After you get it all done, the key thing that you want to do is to turn the MIDI input on. Okay, in synth font, right here. Okay. The little button will change color. It will show you, you know, that it's on, and it mute or sort of uh, grays out the rest of these. Okay. What that's doing now is it is using synth font and the general MIDI um, font that you have installed there as an engine. Okay, I'm going to play you a couple of, I'm going to play you the same cello sonata here. Uh, the first time we're going to play it with the GS wavetable, which is the default that musician and composer use. The second time we're going to play it with a sound font via synth font. Okay, now we're going to um, change this over, and I'm actually going to have to do a little bit of a setup uh, change in my configuration because um, the way I've got my particular devices set up. Um, doesn't like to have uh, this the uh, GS wavetable at the same time. So we're going to use the port, select ports, and I'm actually going to turn off the GS wavetable. If you have issues with latency, um, you may want to consider turning the GS wavetable off. Um, that's a it's a major cause of of problems with latency in audio configurations. So. We're going to, we've, we've uh, turned off the GS wavetable. I've got the loop B1, which is what I'm using to, as my virtual cable to synth font. Now I'm going to bring over the synth font window here. Okay. And I'm going to click the, the activate MIDI input. Okay. And you'll see here that this, the general MIDI sound font that I'm using is called the Taiji. Um, and I'll put a link to that. So that's what I have set up in synth font. Okay. We're going to now play the same file again, and you'll hear the difference in the sound. <laughs> So, you can hear the difference in sound quality um, between the GS wavetable and this particular sound font. Uh, you can also find um, other, you know, renderings of uh, different instruments, and you can do a lot of really cool things with them. Uh, there are a lot of parameters you can change. Um, so, I hope this gets you going into the world of good sounds. Enjoy. Okay, so now what we'll see. Okay, is that I'm using a general MIDI sound font within synth font the program that's on. I've turned that on before I turned on Composer, and you'll see that the device is Loop B. And if you remember from installing those virtual MIDI cables, that's what the device will show up as. It will show up as the cable, not as synth font. Now, if this is a setup that you want to use continually then go ahead and you can name that device whatever you want it. Um, my particular setup is such that I tend to change things around some, so I just leave it as a loop B1. Alright, and if you
if you have a general MIDI sound font that you're working with within synth font, then you can just leave this grid of instruments here and the instrument names and their sounds will be the same except that you can expect to hear nicer sounds with a sound with a sound font than you would with the default GS wavetable. Okay, that's the quick get you going. Um, I'm, I won't show examples here, but uh, you can play around with that and have a lot of fun.